hi guys and welcome back to my channel and before I get on with this video I would like to apologize for my absence I've been going through a lot of personal things um, I'm not gonna go much into details about that but we are here to talk about my natural hair journey experience and how I got from this picture I don't know which corner it's gonna be in I'm trying to put in this one Chanel later editing Chanel but how I got from point E to point B but I'm first gonna talk about my hair before so I'll insert pictures so this one in the corners is my natural hair I'll be looking down my phone because where my pictures are um this is my hair before there's nothing really wrong with it um I can't say it was it wasn't heat damaged it wasn't chemically damaged it was just it was just a lot to deal with like I tried to do everything I could to cut it um, I've had bangs. I did V layers because when my hair used to curl, it used to be short on the back and longer on the front because, of course, if you know natural hair color, you put more focus in the front so it gets more attention and length. So then when I curled it, so when it curled up, it curled evenly so it was shorter. Yeah, you know the V layers. Um, but yeah, I, I did my first natural cut because this picture actually was my first natural cut back in 2015 and it was a mohawk. This picture over here and I absolutely loved it and I thought it would be easier to you know, take care of my hair but one thing about short hair is that it's a lot to maintain because once you cut it it's all fresh hair it's nothing damaged it's nothing old it's nothing anything so it's like it just starts to like grow back like you st like if you ask any woman who has short hair she'll tell you she has to go get lined up or get her back touched up or however her haircut is very often because it grows back so fast because it's nothing wrong with it there's no split ends no heat damage no chemical damage it's a fresh hair so after i had that cut you know i don't even think i kept that cut for a while i think i just started letting it grow back but because it was a mohawk it grew back very awkward and um i just experimented with my hair i dyed it burgundy a lot and I got the top trimmed up so it can all grow out evenly. And I cut my hair so I can take care of my hair better. And because I didn't want to take care of all that hair anyway. And I started, you know, getting lazy with my hair again. And it did start drying out. I have pictures. I think I have pictures of it straight. I know I have pictures of it in buns. My, my struggle buns, actually. Like, I made it work. It was cute in pictures. And in, in person, it was a struggle bun. Like, this, 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 this struggling a little bit. Just a tiny bit, but... This is a real button. That was a struggle button. But it worked. And then around that time, around the same time, the so next year, I cut it off again really short. And that's how this, that picture came to be. Um, but it actually was a lot shorter than that. I cut first cut it in April. And I actually didn't like it at first. Um, I felt like it was too short. And the next picture was in June, which is a few months after. And that's when I liked it, when it grew out a lot. But during that process, I actually, um... I kept my hair short what is it? yeah I kept my hair short for a while throughout the rest of 2016 I mean I was slowly growing it back but not uh, I was I was kind of growing it back then um, but I did keep it a lot healthier than I did the first time like did I die I think I did die it maybe once or twice um, the colors didn't work out so I kept it dark and after that I didn't touch it again. Um, I always deep condition my hair, like condition it like crazy because my hair does get very dry. I don't know why, it's just my hair is just so dry. It sucks up a lot of moisture, so does my skin. I'm just hella dry. Um, but I did and I did do a lot of oil treatments to where I mixed up different oils, whether it was coconut oil, Jamaican black castor oil a lot. Like I used a lot of Jamaican black castor oil. It does promote hair growth. I know because I pulled eyelash experience, pulled them out, helped them grow back. Um, I've had olive oil, avocado oil, and I just mix them in my scalp. And I also sometimes I mix it even with conditioner. And I um, put the plastic caps on and you'll know, put the blow dryer underneath it and just let it heat up and I leave that on for like 30 minutes to an hour maybe just as long as I can before I washed it in the shower and everything but I really kept my hair hydrated that's one thing because I didn't want it to dry out I didn't want it to get damaged I didn't want it to break I also did not put heat in my hair a lot of the time and if I did I went to a professional you will see pictures of me have straightened hair but 
went to a professional i never did it myself if i didn't dye it like my whole head like a burgundy something color or if it was a different color um went to a professional she didn't do my hair about the fifth grade so the process of me growing out that haircut it was interesting because i was so inconsistent because i never always want to change my hair so once the top was growing out i kept actually kept the back shaved for maybe like a month or two and then what did i have after that and then once it grew out because i knew it was so awkward and uneven i don't have a picture of the back i might have a picture of the back shape so i have uh, yeah and it was like really short and curly and i had like two little ponies i did two little ponytails so it was long enough and then um i had a you know, really blunt bob and 20 we still have that picture somewhere yeah 2017 2017 i had a really like was that 2017 yeah i think it was it was a really like blunt bob so it stopped right there because i just wanted to cut the unevenness out but when you curl it just yeah you know, it did that so after that um i also kept my hair natural a lot of the time um i tried to avoid heat as much as possible unless i want to get a haircut like i feel like and if you do want to put heat in your hair i don't recommend doing it yourself i don't i honestly think that you should go to a professional i know people are like oh well i don't have the money for that i feel like i i know people i know a lot of people don't have the money for that but i feel like if you really want it done i personally should go to a professional and there are professionals who can work within your budget who aren't going to charge you an arm and a leg who work who, and who especially who know how to work with natural hair because the lady who used to do my hair years ago when i was younger used to charge my mom 120 to straighten my hair the lady i go to now charges half that literally she charges me 60 bucks been charging me 60 bucks for years for the, all the hair I had to the hair I have now, never, never changed that. So I say if you're gonna put in your hair, go to a professional, unless you really know how to work with your hair and not mess it up. But if you are cutting your hair off because you had heat damage, don't cut it off and then put more heat in it. Like you're completely defeating the purpose of the big chop. Now, I didn't have any negative reasons to why I big chop my hair. Um, but I'm but a lot of people ask me if they should. And I want to say yes because I've seen it work in great experiences. A cousin of mine, sh her hair was really it was chemically damaged cuz she dyed it a lot. It was heat damaged. And I remember she asked the number for the number of the lady who does my hair. So I gave it to her cuz she said she want to cut it off. She cut it off. Her hair I don't remember what year she cut it off. She cut it off while well, I think I was in transitioning or I was doing something. And her hair is is a beautiful length now. It's so curly. I didn't even know her hair was that curly. It looks so good. Like, I know everyone's really afraid and gets really intimidated by the big chop. But I feel if it's dead, why keep it? If it's damaged and it has no point of returning, like, if you know that you can look at your hair and be like, there's no way I can get this to bounce back. There's no way I can get this to curl again. Let it go. It It's really worth it in the end because once it grows back, it grows back so healthy and so beautiful. It's amazing. Like my curl pattern is very inconsistent in some places. Like there's some places in my hair where I literally have like a few straight patches, but my mom said my hair has always been like that. But once I, cut off my hair especially because I didn't take care of it as I should have and it was just so mad at sometimes I just got over it when it grew back and I actually see my curls flourish it was so nice because they were so perfect and so coily and I loved it until I got lazy again like right now my hair is doing good um if you do follow my Instagram and on Snapchat you've seen that I tried to go blonde and that didn't work out I have damaged pieces in the back if there's curling back though um i just was like you know once the root grew out to a, a decent enough length i just like myself like 
it's no, it's not gonna go back. It's not gonna bounce back. It bounced back as much as it could. It still has. It's not curled, but it has a little, little oomph to it. But I just cut it off, and it was just like it's gonna grow back. It's not the, the end of the world. It's not. Um, now everybody's hair does not grow at the same process, so you might do this big chop and then get what it is about like year or two later and you're like well my hair is not the same length as yours like i said another thing everything that might work for me doesn't work with you for you so please don't shoot me don't come back a year later and be like well my hair isn't grown as fast as yours it might not grow as fast as yours your shrinkage might be different from mine we could be having the same length hair and your shrinkage is tighter than mine when you straighten it it's a lot longer than mine was so you have to put kid put that in mind as well don't don't come for me don't come for me if it does not shrinkage is a main factor um making sure your hair is hydrated and your scalp is hydrated is a main factor investing in products that you know are worth the money is key um doing oil treatments doing deep conditioners protein treatments is a key factor and alternating your hair products is a huge factor when i tell you alternating your hair products is going to be great for your hair it's going to be great I'll tell you i don't use a lot of oils in my actual hair hair like when people like sit there and put oils in their hair I rarely do that I don't like oils in my hair because they don't so my hair doesn't soak up the oils the oils sit on my hair but that's just me like I'll oil my scalp but I will not put it throughout my whole hair unless I'm about to do like you know, my deep oil treatment I have to wash my hair but I don't sit there and put oils in my hair I do however alternate my hair products I'll either put use two different products like i'll have two different products at a time and i'll use one one day one the other day mix them up but i'll try not to use the same exact product very consistently because with my hair and a lot of other hairs and my sister hair does that um a lot of people other people here might do that too and they just don't know this um your hair will get used to the product so say if you're using you know the shea moisture curly hair smoothie and it works at first and then you just see like why is it why is it not doing it anymore because your hair got too used to it so it's not giving you that fresh reaction anymore so maybe one week you use that and then the next week you can use like olive oil hair put in or just use straight conditioner like i think i mentioned it the organics biotinic collagen or the coconut one I love organic shampoo. That is the only shampoo and conditioner I actually use. From those, the Biotin one. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I love it. And I don't know if I mentioned this again. Getting brain farts. Um, I did take Biotin pills for a for a short period of time. Not very long. I didn't. I I get very forgetful of taking stuff. So that was probably a month. It didn't do anything. But I did use the Biotin and collagen shampoo from organics a lot or sometimes i just use the straight conditioner they had a coconut curl section um i would use the the conditioner stuff for that i constantly alternate hair products yes i know natural hair products are expensive you don't always have to use the most expensive products because some of them i found for three dollars some of them i found for 15. i just make sure that my hair didn't keep getting the same thing because it wasn't gonna react anymore it wasn't gonna you know do it wasn't gonna get used to it i don't want it to get used to the same thing because it's gonna stop reacting because i know my hair will stop reacting like the curls won't look as luscious and as prosperous 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 i think i think that's the word you guys know what i'm saying and another thing i did is i do not wash my hair often i do wash my hair um i try to alternate it i try to Say if it's the first week of the month, that'll be my wash week. I'll wash it some day that week. The um, the next week, I will more of a co-wash where I just wet it and I keep the conditioner on throughout the whole shower before I and you know do everything I do. And before I, you know, I get out, I rinse it off, rinse the rest of my body off, get the conditioner off my body, all that stuff. Yes, I wash my hair in the shower. 
that's me. I don't, that's what I do. You don't have to. I don't want to hear any judgment. I know a lot of people who do it. And then a week after that, I will, I probably wash it again. I try to only wash my hair if I have a whole bunch of buildup. If I wear buns for a very long time, like if I wear a bun for like a week straight, I have so much gel buildup that I'll try to wash my hair. But I don't wash your hair very often. Do not wet your hair every day. Water dries out your hair. I'm telling you the first experience, I used to wash my hair all the time. I used to always no, it it just is you're just stripping all the natural oils out your hair. And don't wash your hair very often. Let the natural oils build up. Let them hydrate your hair. Cause I know it's gonna sound gross for uh, for the people who wash your hair, if your hair Especially if you have natural hair and you have naturally curly hair, those natural oils help your curls and keep them healthy rather than you washing your hair every day and you're stripping your curls from their bounce, from their shine, the luster from them. Don't, don't do it. Please, please don't wash for every day. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, get haircuts. It's just, it's, it's about, big chops are about investing in your hair. This is your chance to start over don't cut your hair off because of dead or damaged and then go back to doing the same thing i know a lot of people have done that i mean i've done it that's why i cut it off a second time and because i got bored as well too but if you're gonna if you really want to do a big chop i highly suggest it um the one thing about it it gets so addicting once you cut your hair and you get comfortable with a style or something, you're gonna want to keep cutting it. I promise you. My one of my other close friends, she cut off. I don't know if it was a big chop or not. She cut off her hair. Her hair has been short for maybe a year or two, maybe I don't know, maybe even more than that. Shout out to Danita. But she, her hair is short. Her hair has been short for a long time, and I think I cut my hair off before she did, and she cut her hair off, but she kept her hair. I've kept my hair short for about it was short about maybe two years, so she's about to be going on two years because I have hair now. But it gets it gets really addicting, but it is it's worth it. So yeah, that, I mean, hopefully this was helpful. I don't know. I, this is just what I went through for my natural hair. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like I'll answer any question you have. Um, I. If you have any questions about products, um, I can't think of every product I use, but if you ask me if I use the product and I recognize the name, I'll let you know. But I'm just saying, girl, just, just get rid of it. Just If it's dead, why keep it? You don't keep dead flowers. Why keep your dead hair? I mean, you know, you know while you're here, you know, you can like, you can subscribe. Um, follow me on my social media platforms to keep up with me because I do talk about natural hair things on there sometimes or people ask me what I put in my hair but yeah